Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a comparison between the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 and the Microsoft Surface Laptop 3. Now, while these machines look nothing alike and will attract completely different customers, they are virtually the same. By that I mean their internals and the pricing structure that Microsoft presents us with. And bear in mind the, Sur the Surface Laptop 3 on the right is the 15 inch model, not the 13 and a half, which of course would be a better comparison because we have a 12.3 inch display with the uh, Surface Pro 7. But this is what I've got folks. So this is what I can work with and I can give you experience based on that. So first and foremost, the Surface Pro 7 of course is the tablet that promises to replace your laptop. And the good news is, is that here in the seventh generation, it's exactly what it does. I mean, true since Gen 1, although it did need some work, and boy, did Microsoft put it in. And even though we haven't gotten a redesign, in fact, the Surface Pro X that I'll be looking at tomorrow when it hopefully arrives is the redesign I think many of us hoped we'd see with this, but of course, it, alas, is not. It is still the best product of its kind on the market. Now, when it comes to the Surface Laptop, I passed on Gen 1 and 2. I did not review it. I didn't really think it was special. I thought this generation would be the difference maker. Uh, unfortunately, that for me, at least with the 15 inch version of this product, hasn't been the case. I love the build quality. I think the design is nice, but the lack of IO and uh, the price that they charge for the components that you get is just I have no other way of putting it other than awful. So let's get into pricing and specifications and then I will take us down that wormhole that is this comparison. So the Surface Pro 7 is the Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. You know it has, or you may not, a micro SD card slot for storage expansion, something you will not get with the Surface laptop. It also uh, has, at least in my experience, best in class Wi-Fi performance. That is something you will get with the Surface laptop. Uh, the display is, certainly uh, aged. It's not up to snuff with present uh, displays on other competing products, but overall the package uh, is capable of competing with just about everything else on the market. If you're looking for the lightest computing solution on the market that just happens to be a tablet, this is it at 1.7 pounds, throw in the type cover, this one specifically for another 160 US, then throw in the pen for another hundred and you've got a complete deal here in terms of a computer that's roughly two pounds, all said and done. Gives you about uh, eight to nine hours of battery life. Uh, Microsoft rates it at 10. Uh, they rate this with even more and this does do better on battery life, um, but at a little under 1500 US, this is expensive for a Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM, but you are getting a design that is pretty much unmatched. The uh, type cover, still best in class. They didn't have to make a new one this year because, well, they didn't make a new Surface Pro, did they? They gave us a new chipset. We do have uh, Intel's 10th Gen Ice Lake. We have a Type-C port now, which gives us the ability to charge up in roughly two hours. There are the ports. Um, you know, we have Microsoft's own Surface charging port, and then we have a Type-A port, and of course, a uh, USB Type-C, but it is not a Thunderbolt port. And then on the other side of the machine, we have uh, our headphone uh, microphone combo jack. And on the top, we have our power button and volume rocker right there. If I can bring it into focus, focus, uh, maybe, maybe not. You all know where it is. Uh, micro SD card slot is right there on its backside and uh, a kickstand that is still best in class that I wish other manufacturers had, but well, Microsoft's patent wouldn't stand, would it, if they did. With the Surface Laptop, the model I have here, unfortunately, is the AMD uh, Ryzen 5 uh, with the Vega GPU, uh, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. You're looking at 1699, ouch, yeah, you heard right. This is the most expensive, uh, least impressive laptop that I've seen in a really long time. Now, from the build quality, you know, aesthetic, it is impressive. Um, I'm not in love with either of these displays. They're both three by two aspect ratio, which I know a lot of you out there live by, swear by, need it, won't consider 16 by nine or 16 by 10, and I get that. But when it comes to uh, color accuracy, brightness, they're both just okay. They're not special anymore. When Microsoft first debuted the Surface Pro uh, you know, revamp that they did years ago, this was impressive. Now, it's not as impressive. I mean, how could it be? It's older. 
And the same applies to this. I mean, even though this is the first time we're getting a 15 inch Surface Laptop 3, which by the way, is the reason I'm reviewing the 15 inch because that is what sets it apart is that we actually have a 15 inch laptop now. I find it to be nothing but underwhelming. And that's really unfortunate because I mean, both of these have a lot of potential. I always will feel the Surface Pro 7 has more because uh, unfortunately, Microsoft really isn't incorporating much more than what's inside the Surface Pro 7 into a laptop form factor. I mean, they share the same chipsets if you're dealing with the 13 and a half inch. I know we're dealing with the 15, um, but basically all you're getting is a bigger screen. Of course, a physical keyboard that is attached. Uh, it's no longer a tablet, but the internal specs, if you don't go with AMD, and yes, you can get the 15 inch with Intel internals, which I highly recommend. If you must have the 15 inch version of this laptop, please do, do yourself a favor and get the business, the enterprise version, get the Intel chip because the AMD chip, unfortunately, is a money grab in my opinion. It's Microsoft throwing it out in the wind, hoping that consumers will be none the wiser like Apple consumers and just hand over money and not really know any better. And based on my you know experience with it, uh, benchmarking with uh, Geekbench, Cinebench, 3D, Mark, um, gaming on it, it's just garbage compared to its Intel uh, competitor. So if you really must have the 15 inch version of this machine, do yourself a favor and take a hard pass on the AMD uh, variant. It's, it's, it's a friggin' trash bag. I really don't know what Microsoft was thinking. Well, I know what they were thinking. They were thinking they would make more money with this machine, right? That was the idea. Uh, but it's at, uh, unfortunately, damage to their own reputation that they made that trade-off. So it's not, all bad. I mean, it functions, but I would never recommend this to anyone. And you're getting a little preview, unfortunately, of my full review of this product. It just isn't up to snuff with the standards that I have, nor would I afford to any of you for how your money should be spent. Hard-earned money to be spent on a laptop that looks great, feels great, but performs Oh, like a five to six hundred dollar laptop. I mean, that's the reality of the performance with this. And if you look around, even though the Vega is a custom chip, um, you know, the Ryzen 5, it's a budget chipset that you're going to find in budget laptops. But yet this is not a budget laptop. Now, the Intel versions are identical with, of course, the configurations for the Surface Pro 7. And that's really the best comparison one can make, but the most common build you're going to find is the AMD build when it comes to the 15 inch. If you're sticking with the 13 and a half, which by the way, I prefer over this because this screen, I mean, too low res on this. The Surface Pro 7 display is much sharper than the 15 inch display you're getting here uh, with the Surface Laptop 3. And, you know, that's really pretty bad. I mean, I cannot excuse this in any way, shape or form. Microsoft, for their first 15-inch laptop, yeah, I know the Surface Book came before it. No one needs to tell me that in a 15-inch capacity, but it's not a traditional laptop. They should have done better with this. So uh, keyboard is fine. You know, the touchpad is huge. It's, I, I hate the fact that it reminds me so much of Apple because this isn't an Apple machine. This is Microsoft. They should have their own identity. And I think they did a decent job with the design of this machine. I do prefer the 13 and a half. It's, it's a much nicer uh, machine for the money. And I think the form factor is far better. Um, if they really wanted to differentiate this, they should have given more IO, something to justify this larger footprint that is gigantic. Now, when it comes to uh, general content consumption, I'm going to go ahead and close that and reopen it and also make sure that um, we're at performance mode, at least on battery, which I believe we are. We are. And that screen brightness is all the way up, which I believe uh, that it is, and it is. So let's go ahead and open up a little bit of Chrome and uh, let's go take a look at some 4K video, even though neither of these can natively display 4K. And it is tough for me to recommend uh, really either of these machines unless you must have the Microsoft brand. I mean, the Surface Pro 7 at least has an identity. I feel like Surface Laptop is still trying to find it. And uh, as much as I like the 13 and a half inch mo uh, model, this thing is just a gigantic doorstop in many ways. And that again reminds me so much 
of Apple. And I know Apple users are going to say, oh, the hate, uh, hating on Apple. I don't hate on Apple. I wish they would make something interesting other than, you know, monitors that cost as much as used cars. Um, stop that for a moment. I'm trying to find that same demo here. I'm not seeing the, uh, the 4K LG. Let me see if I just type in LG. If it populates, and it does. So audio is better with the Surface laptop, but that's expected. It's gigantic, right? And the last demo I played with this, it was stuttering. And guess what? With this one, it's stuttering also. So before anybody tells me that it's my fault, wake up. I'm going to stop it there because this is ridiculous. I mean, now it's playing normally, but full screen, it chokes. And we're nowhere near pushing 4K, even though it's, you know, playing in a 4K profile. Uh, here on the Surface Pro 7 with the Core i5, which is fanless, cool, this is not um, in that same realm. It plays seamlessly. And that tells you something. Anyway, I'm going to stop this. Long story short is that the Surface Pro 7 is better at doing everything, in my opinion, than the Surface Laptop, at least the 15-inch model. Now, if you have the Intel version, then your performance is going to be an absolute wash. And it all comes down to form factor. If you want a laptop, get a laptop. Get the Surface Laptop. So there's nothing wrong with the Surface Laptop running the Intel configurations, and I probably should have said this right at the top. I mean, I know I said the AMD is garbage, but I didn't say the Intel version is great. And that's because I don't think it's actually great. I just think it'll be comparable to the Surface Pro 7. And I think that if you should buy any product from Microsoft, at least this is the way my mind works, the Surface Pro 7 is still the product to buy because there are so many laptops on the market. Microsoft does not do enough to differentiate when it comes to the Surface Laptop. Surface Book, own identity. Surface Laptop, Mac clone. I just, I, you know, I didn't want to feel that way. I tried to convince myself of otherwise with this. But even if you get the Intel version of this, you're sitting on a piece of tech that feels dated. Yeah, it's got the right aspect ratio if you want 3 by 2 um, But I can't help but feel that every part of this machine, again, let's presume it's Intel and not AMD, so we can get rid of the, the stinky garbage smell, it still feels like a dated machine. Uh, it just reminds me of something trying to pull business away from Apple. Even if I think it's nicer than the MacBook Pro, which I do, it still isn't enough when it comes to its capability. I mean, why is it so big and yet all it has are the ports that the Surface Pro 7 has? That's a joke. I'll take the Surface Pro 7. Yeah, it's not as big a screen, but why would I want a display like this? I just, I don't see the novelty in having a giant, you know, stretched out display. And it's not pixelated. You're not going to feel like you're looking at garbage. But when you compare this to other 14 and 15 inch laptops, like I've been doing, I mean, whether I compare it to the HP Spectre or the Lenovo C940, this just is, is not something I'd ever recommend ever, 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 ever. So in this comparison, the Surface Pro 7 wins. I mean, even if this was an Intel build, I would take this all day because this is unique. This has identity. This is one of a kind. This is trying to be one of a kind, but isn't really doing anything in my opinion. I mean, it's just this huge footprint. And for what? For Microsoft's proprietary charging port, which I don't blame them for hanging on to. And then on the other side, I mean, I know they're going for a clean, uh, minimalist look. And so we've got, if I can frame that out, a headphone jack, a Type-C port. This should have been Thunderbolt, at least. Come on, you want to differentiate? Make this Thunderbolt. And then a Type-A. This is just, I'm sorry. Outside of build quality and aesthetic, Surface Laptop, even in its third generation, the 15-inch model at least, is a joke. I get not having more on the 13 and a half because they're keeping it as lightweight 
and small as possible, kind of like they're doing with the Surface Pro 7. But what is going on with the 15 inch model? So again, even if you go with Intel here, I just feel like you are shooting yourself in the foot. If you go with AMD, just give me the money and I'll pretend I'm a laptop. I mean, it's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. I just, you know, and uh, as I mentioned, this is in many ways telling of what my review is going to be like. I mean, outside of the build quality and the look. I mean, it's got a good keyboard. It's got a good touchpad. That's it. Benchmarking scores. The Surface Pro 7 outperforms it. The i5 outperforms the Ryzen 5 with the 16 gigs of RAM. 1600, uh, 1699 versus uh, 1199, and the Surface Pro 7 beats it. Battery life's a little bit better here, but do I want better battery life in an inferior machine? Absolutely not. I'd rather have less battery life. And it doesn't beat it by that much either. So, you know, the good news is you can charge it in two hours with the included uh, charger or a 65 watt type C charger. You will not be able to charge either of these with your smartphone charger unless it's 65 watts. And you might want to buy one so that you have one to rule them all. But that's it. I mean, uh, Surface Pro 7 all day. I mean, even if you need a bigger display, I cannot justify going with this. And yes, they're very similar display types. I think the display uh, on the Surface laptops a little bit brighter, but eh, that's it. I mean, there's really nothing else outside of the keyboard. It's ergonomics. And considering, I, I swear to God, this keyboard looks like it's the exact same size as this one. So even though we got this giant palette that they could have put an army on of functions, and I'm not saying that they should mess it up. They wanted a really clean look, they accomplished that. But uh, to just give us the same exact keyboard and a slightly larger touchpad, I don't get it. I'm kind of lost. So, I mean, I give Microsoft credit for entering the 15-inch laptop space, but that's all I give them credit for because they didn't do anything to give this an identity. And if putting AMD in it to make more money is the identity, well, then you're doing a really bad job at emulating you-know-who. And the last thing I want to see Microsoft do is emulate Apple. The last thing. I mean, the whole point of this is that this goes unchallenged. And, and all the people that are going to say, well, my iPad Pro, stop. You're using a mobile device. I don't care what you think. It's a mobile device. It is not a computer. Let's not compare them because they're not like. I mean, I'll likely do a comparison of this and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, but it'll be under the guise of that one is a computer and one isn't. And it's all going to be about how you use it, right? So when people say my iPad Pro is better than this, uh, you don't have a computer. Do you mean it's better than this for you? That may be true. But for the general public, they either need a computer or they don't. And if they need one, your iPad Pro, I don't care how many apps it has, it's not a computer. It's a fake out, man and woman. So bear that in mind. And uh, there's a rant going on here because I've got one product I really like, even if it's aged and needs a redesign. And then I've got another that I can't believe this is a brand new piece of hardware. Woof, woof, woof. And I'm not mimicking my new puppy. I, I just, I don't know what to say. So kudos on the Surface Pro 7, even though it's not a leap, it's not revolutionary, it's evolutionary. Uh, but you don't even have a micro SD card slot on this gigantic thing. Nothing can be up. I mean, I don't know if anything can be upgraded really. I know they were showing on the Surface Pro X, which I'll be reviewing tomorrow that you can, you know, it's user uh, modifiable, but I don't know. You've got to have like a tool set, don't you? I don't know what you have to actually have. Uh, I can't recommend this. I, j I just can't. This comparison all about Surface Pro 7 being the better device. Uh, benchmarks, again, even if I had the Intel version next to it and they benchmarked identically, which they will, um, I still wouldn't recommend this because uh, the 15-inch display is nice. Don't get me wrong. It just, this should have been 4K. And if they did this just to save battery life, then poo-poo. I mean, that's not a good enough reason. For me, I think that's a letdown from a company that I've come to expect innovation from. So for all the Apple fanboys out there, realize I criticize where it's applicable. This is not, I don't have an unwavering support for anybody. Not even Sony. 
as much as I love their products, you know, you can't turn a, a turd into a diamond, you know, lipstick on a pig. It only goes so far, right? Only so far. And that's what I see here. Lipstick on a pig. Uh, they made a nice looking product that is just nice looking. Here, they didn't make it nice looking. We don't get a, a revamp in design. We got bigger bezels. Look at that. Bigger bezels on the tablet. Wow. Wow, wow, we. But we have a better computer in every way, in my opinion. Because why on earth would I want to carry, even if I'm blind already, I wear glasses, but to get a 15 inch display attached to internals like this, I just don't see the point. I see the point with other competing products that have 15 inch panels that have dedicated graphics, that have, you know, desktop class challenging processors. But when you're dealing with an Ultrabook, I just don't know why you'd want a giant paperweight like this. I can't recommend it, even with Intel internals. I, I just can't. It's just too expensive for what it is, no matter how you slice it, no matter which configuration you go with. I'm going to recommend the Surface Pro 7 or a Surface Book. Let's go last gen Surface Book too, even though we'll probably get a refresh. So again, I know I didn't show that much on performance, but when it comes to this machine, there's not much to show. And the Core i5, it's admirable. Um, gaming, you can game on this. It's going to be awful. Really, it's going to be. It's not going to be good. And I think the Core i5 does just as well and is less expensive and doesn't need the additional RAM. So why on earth would you go with this? I, I don't know. And hopefully that's clear through the course of this 21 plus minute video that Surface Pro 7 all day. I don't know how many times I've said it. Um, I wanted to really like this device. I thought it had a lot of potential, but it, it basically just fell flat. It, the AMD processor they stuck in here would have had to been magical. And it is anything but magical. Whereas the 10th gen processors, they're good. But even those I don't think can save this 15 inch model. The 13 and a half, I keep saying, I'll endorse that thing. I've used it, I'm not reviewing it, but I know what it offers and between the size and the performance, it's okay. This, I just, I have nothing but good things to say about the Pro 7 and I got nothing really to say about the Surface Laptop 3. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I wish I had more positive news regarding this device, but the good news is the Surface Pro 7 is still worth it and it's gonna go down in price much more quickly than this. Now, when this goes down, it might be worth considering. Again, I wouldn't get the AMD, but in the Intel varieties, in those variants, I would consider it. But the Surface Pro 7 is already going on sale. So if you really need a bigger display than what the Pro 7 has to offer, look away from Microsoft. That's my advice. Look to Lenovo with the C940. You know, look to the Spectre. Look to Dell. Take a pass on Microsoft's 15-inch Surface Laptop 3, even with Intel internals, because the price is just not worth getting involved with. You're going to need to carry extra crap with you when you're already carrying extra crap with you. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.